Okay, greeting folks. Today we will be talking about curriculum standards. A brief history of the modern standards movement. Okay, we will cover that. The former uh, Assistant Secretary of Education of America, Dana Ravitch, is commonly recognized as one of the chief architects of the modern standard movement. In a book, National uh, Standards in American Education, A Citizen's Guide, Ravitch uh, explains the rationale for standards is a straightforward manner. Americans expect strict standards to govern construction of buildings, bridges, highway and tunnels. Shoddy work would put lives at risk, she explains. Then ex they expect stringent standards to protect their drinking water, food they eat, the air they breathe. Standards are created because they improve activity of life. Rimevich asserts that just as standards improve uh, daily living of Americans, so too will the improvement of effectiveness of American education if standards were to employ. Standards can improve uh, achievement by clearly defining what it is taught and what kind of performance is expected. According to the dictionary, a standard is a level of quality achievement, especially a level that is thought to be acceptable. It is sometimes something used to measure or estimate the quality or degree of something. For example, how good is a piece of work, or how fine is uh, a particular material, or how long a particular string is. <coughs> In the field of education, standard is a term which defines the curriculum, uh, the cumulative body of knowledge and set of competitiveness that is based on the quality of education. They express uh, what all the pupils should know and able to do, but do not uh, dictate pedagogy. Uh, this is from the American, right? So, as I told you before, standards movement came about to regulate and to standardize uh, learning. Uh, it's particularly very relevant from the American perspective because from the beginning or historically, the education evolved from a decentralized uh, curriculum. So if you have to see this from a Malaysian perspective, uh, currently at least it's not uh, even in the sense that Malaysia clearly have a centralized curriculum. But however, having said that, uh, tertiary environment, things are beginning to change because QA is beginning to have program standards. Currently, the program standards are medicine, nursing, biotechnology, computer science, and I believe that this list will only get longer. And this, uh, no who's to say, a few years down the line, that even the school at school level, our standards needs to be implemented. Now, the importance of having national standards. Stating national standards allow for equal opportunity. First, all pupils are compared to the same standards. If there is no common standards and every teacher sets her own standards, school's demand on the pupils will be different. Since there is nothing for schools to compare with, both instruction and assessment cannot be consistent. Secondly, if national standards are set, it is clear what pupils should know at different levels of their education. Exams given by states can measure pupils' progress towards attaining these standards. Pupils, have, pupils who are not achieving the standards can be, can be provided with early and effective assistance. In Malaysia, for example, public schools don't have this problem as we are governed by standardized testing, namely UPSR, SPM, and so on and so forth. Having said that, I would like to draw your attention. There have been moves in the past and, and probably for certain in the future of decentralizing components of standardized testing because uh, progressive educators see standardized testing limits the pedagogical or the learning and teaching experience in the school. So there has been move in the Malaysian educational landscape to, to allocate certain portions of the testing to be done as school-based testing. 
So this is where the the movement of standards come in because it's going to be school based. Now they will tell you not what the questions to ask, but at the, the they will be measuring from the performance level. Advantage of setting standards are the advantage of setting standards is important and effect for effective learning because they express clear expectations of what all people should know and able to do. They can be helpful to different populations, such as states, district, at school, teachers, pupils, and parents. So you are basically aligning the different stakeholders, starting the starting from the state level, the district level, the school level, and then later uh, at a microscopic level from the teacher, the pupil, and the parents. The following describe how setting standards can help this different uh, population. Now we will start off with the state. <coughs> Okay. For the state, standards are common reference tool and provide a defined framework for national set setting. Uh, for the districts and school, the district and school standards provide the focus of developing new ways of organizing curriculum, content, instructional program and assessment plans. If you take from a Malaysian context, this is really important because uh, as we are aware in previous discussion that Curriculum has to be designed, understand, designed based on your understanding of your students. And I believe that if you are teaching in somewhere in Sabah, Sarawak or Kulim, you may have to teach it differently if you are teaching somewhere in Bangsa or uh, Batam Island, for example. Uh, because things need to be customized. So if you are going towards the standard movement, then understanding what the state needs and what the district and the school level needs can really make it more effective. Because standards may not vary, however approaches could. Then from the teacher's perspective, standards help teachers to design curriculum, instruction and assessment on the basis of what it is important to learn. They, are also, they also enable teachers to make uh, expectations clear to the people which improves their learning. Now from the pupils perspective, <coughs> standards are set clear performance expectations helping them to understand what they need in order to meet the expectations and then finally from the parents perspective since standards are communicated shared expectations for learning they allow parents to know how their children are progressing and the expectation of their children from uh, to be that will be subsequently measured through the assessment process now not everyone looks at uh, standards as a good thing many people do consider um, working with program standards as an uh, as a disadvantage rather than purely an advantage particularly in america concerns were raised that setting standards would lead to centralized centralizing the education and would un would undermine innovation at the local level setting standards would seen as an attempt to centralize a decentralized education system defining standards would limit pupils uh, what people should learn and would allow will not allow pupils diversity and specific needs of different population so that was a major concern or that is still a major concern in america or or not necessarily America, uh, any system that practices diversity and decentralization. Now on the other hand, in education systems that are already centralized, standard-based curriculum attempts partially to decentralize it. Okay? The curriculum defines what pupils are expected to do at different levels of performance, particularly in, in four areas such as, uh, four areas, for example, in language learning. They could uh, see because in language learning you could have certain curriculum that is fixed, but however, certain components or standards could be derived that allow teachers to come in and localize learning within a cultural or a geographical context. So the four areas they are talking about is social interaction, access to information, presentation and application of literature, and culture and language. Because this could be the significant part that differentiates between someone in Bangsa and someone in Bintulu, for example. Okay? Teachers will now have autonomy to decide how they will teach in order that their pupils achieve the standards. Teachers are therefore encouraged to become active participants in the development of curriculum material that would follow the 
uh, follow the principles stated in the curriculum and that are appropriate for specific learning population. Finally, the aim of this document is to serve the needs of increasingly diverse population, uh, pupil population while, they are, while at the same time sustaining high standards of performance demanding in today's society and employers and university. So the standards will, will be able to regulate the diversity in the system. However, the, using correct standards will increase opportunity for people to customize their learning needs. Can you see the, the double-edged sword in this argument? In one hand, we want to use standards to organize so that people all will become conformed to certain things. And in other case, we like to argue that by having this, we would allow you the opportunity to, to customize. So it's a difficult task to uphold, but nevertheless, this is an argument that people have brought forward to uh, setting standards. The second uh, issue is the role of standards played in teaching and learning assessment process. Remember, all these three are triangulated, right? Teaching, learning, and assessment needs to come in play. The second issue describes the role of standards played in teaching, learning, and assessment process. An example is how standard-based curriculum affects the process will be given. Standards require a change in both teaching and assessment. Standards and assessment are intertwined and need an integral part of curriculum and the program instruction. Uh, traditional curricula, traditional curricula, content matter and pupils are expected to know is determined. Okay? This, is the, the, this is the crux of it. In traditional curriculum, content matter that the pupils are expected to know is predetermined. It follows the process of testing is to see the pupils have learned a specific knowledge. Okay, because that is what standards is, is to measure whether you have learned a particular knowledge. Indicates, and that is the, that is the, the an underlying uh, goal of the curriculum, is to make sure that you learn specific knowledge. It's not to construct, it's not to bring meaning, but to learn a specific knowledge. So this comes back very behaviorist from certain perspective. Uh, recent approaches to pupils, uh, how people learn, have changed from behavioral view of learning to constructive learning theories and constructivist approach to knowledge acquisition. Similarly, assessment is no longer seen as testing pupils on accumulation and isolation of facts and skills, but emphasized on the application. So this is where people are suggesting that maybe we have to move from hunting and seeking knowledge to processing so if you so the the, the the proponents of standard base argues that if you have the right standards then the right process can be achieved if if it's only focusing on traditional knowledge accumulation then the test will be derived from there and then the curriculum will be delivering from a behaviorist perspective however if the standards are to be tweaked where use of knowledge is measured then uh, the curriculum experience will shift to a more constructive and process-oriented uh, assessment and testing uh, paradigm. So the, we talked about in working with standards, the assessment system needs to be congruent with what is being tested and how. The standard-based assessment, in addition to assessing people's performance as compared to what people uh, have learned, pupils are assessed again against a standard this shift of standard based assessment is to create a culture of success uh, claims a particular scholar where all pupils can achieve an acceptable level this in contrast to the variation in pupils learning as expected by bell shaped grades so this is uh, standard based uh, likes to talk about uh, criteria reference assessment because it is yes or no you know, one of those dichotomous have you achieved the criteria or no if you have other as opposed to the standard testing talks about normal distribution curve right remember we talked about how many percentage of you will get a how many percentage will get C and then how we will dis disperse the grades in between and things like that whereas if it's standard based then it's more uh, from criteria reference assessment where it gives you 
uh, the ability to talk about mastery, whether you have achieved or not achieved. Subsequently, in standard-based curriculum, assessment is viewed not only as the final product, that is, you know, your traditional word, summative, but also as continual process, a formative, that provides pupils' performance data to teachers and standard students regarding their progress towards achieving a standard. Curriculum sets benchmark levels for pupils' achievement and progress towards meeting the standards by describing what the pupils can do. Therefore, it is necessary to move beyond testing methods which concentrate on memory and develop those which measures understanding and application. Now, this is the hardest part because spe uh, specific, especially as we have argued in the curriculum design and curriculum uh, uh, construction course, the more and more courses become purely cognitive. And, and a lot of these things are quite difficult to be embedded from a, construct, a cognitive uh, construct because uh, many of the questions that you're going to test on understanding and, and, and uh, implementation in a paper and pencil test that is very hard to be measured and implemented. However, the proponents of standards are saying that if, once again, it's the same thing as I mentioned earlier, they are saying that the so-called behaviorist uh, limitation that people generally cast uh, negatively on standard base is only limited because the kind of tests you write and design. Because the standards that you demand in the standards document will then dis be translated to teaching and learning activities. So if you cast a very shallow standard, then the teaching and learning activity will be simple and behaviorist, uh, what do you call it, pegged or embedded from a behaviorist model. So the standards uh, supporters argue that if you have proper standards and proper measurement techniques, then all the noble attributes towards teaching and learning can be achieved. Okay. So they talk about, in summary, implementation of steps-based curriculum for learning, teaching, assessment process includes both formative and formative assessment, a variety of assessment methods, assessment tasks which allow pupils to demonstrate their knowledge, including the criteria for assessment, develop assessments showing progress towards attaining the standards, standards assessment task, which is integrated within the learning, teaching and assessment process, and not to consists only of the final product. Now the things that we need to talk about, uh, some of the issues are standards are themselves are meaningless, right? The standards doesn't do anything. What counts is the educators and others, steps that educators and others take towards helping students achieve these standards. If you decide to emb embark on the implication, or sorry, the uh, embark on implementing standard-based education, there are a few different things that you need to consider. First, the pupils, the pupil themselves. Now, when you talk about students, do we expect the all people to achieve all the standards? What are the inter interventions will we will be will we be able to provide for pupils who fail to meet the standards? What will happen to pupils who have not achieved the standards? Do they get left behind? Are they allowed to graduate? Uh, if they have not achieved the standards. And another question is when we recruit students, are we going to recruit students of similar background in order to uh, able to predict the product? Or what happens to students who come, uh, if you are teaching in a community where you have diverge uh, heterogeneous population, how would you handle that? The next square issue that you need to ask is about <coughs> teachers. How does one how does one change teachers' belief about teaching, learning, and assessment process? How can we help teachers deal with change regarding their pedagogical values, beliefs, and development towards the new methodological skills? What are the ways we can help teachers, teachers to understand the document and the implication of their teaching? And then last one is, what support can we give during the process of teaching becoming more autonomous. So in one way, teachers need to be liberated to be autonomous. In the other ways, we should teach them. At the same time, they should know their autonomy is bounded by this document or the standards. And how do we train teachers to juggle um, the notion of standards and 
allow them to be autonomous enough to be creative and, and bring in uh, teaching and learning activities that will really uh, really uh, liberate and make meaningful teaching and learning. And then the, another area that needs to talk about is assessment. How can pupils, how will pupils progress towards achieving the standards uh, be reported? What are, the, what are the changes need to be taken, take place regarding schools, district and state assessment or assessment at all the different levels? How will state and district assess whether pupils have achieved standards at different levels? What measures of accountability should be taken? Will the national and district tests given to, uh, given, given the country a barometer to determine how well the schools are doing? and provide valuable information on which needs additional, uh, how people will need additional ass uh, assistance. Should there be a national testing at the end of the foundation, intermediate and uh, proficiency level? How can bank, how can a bank of prototypes of performance task exhibition and portfolios and projects be developed? It's the same thing that you guys are asking me, right? When I ask you, to design a portfolio the first thing you come is what should I include do I have samples see the problem with uh, creating a standard based thing is to have uh, is, is to restrict the diversity but then diversity allows you to be creative right because if, if you don't allow diversity to some extent then you allow then the only thing you're encouraging is people to conform and when people conform, they, they have to, they end up giving up certain part of the curriculum, certain skills needs to be given up in order to conform. So this is a thin line that many educators need to, to think about how assessment is going to be used to promote standardization at the same time, not compromising all the noble values of learning. Now, there are a few things else that we need to talk about, such as standards and benchmarks. Now the final issue we like to talk about standards and benchmarks. The biggest question you would like to ask is whose standards? For example, from a Malaysian perspective, you have two end of the two ends of the paradigm. One could be Bangsa and the other could be Bintulu. And where would you strike the balance? Would you go somewhere geographically in the middle? Or would you take the entire nation's performance and then somehow aggregate it to somewhere in the middle? Wouldn't that compromise the high achievers? And if you do that, what is the use of standards? So the question is, when you want to talk about standards and benchmark, the biggest question is, we should ask is school standards and who will decide the standards? The other thing is, how will the standards be written? Uh, when I say how, I'm also talking about the entire legislative uh, issue about writing standards, because you are aware that anything to do with legislation you are talking about three to five years to getting something right from the discussion level to to at the policy level <coughs> and the amount of different stakeholders that you need to navigate to get something done so uh, if this is to be implemented then how how uh, fr how are we going to keep up with change because every time you want to do some ch uh, tweaking to the standards you're talking about three years and that will be talking about our preparedness to, to make curriculum relevant to the changing needs or changing times. Okay. So the bigger thing is you need to ask is uh, the underlying assumption of the importance of setting standards. As I told you, this is a very difficult chapter to cover in our program because we are talking about, for example, from the international uh, level, the countries where, for example, America to some extent, Australia and UK and probably many developed countries, they have a decentralized curriculum. So if you read many, many books, literatures, they talk about how they're going to use standards to consolidate the diversity in their educational landscape. But countries like Malaysia, on the other hand, is overly centralized. And many academics uh, are putting an argument that due to this uh, overly regulated, overly centralized curriculum, they can they have very limited opportunity to innovate and introduce content in a very meaningful way. So if we argue the need for standards, we could say that once standards uh, have uh, clearly articulated the performing performance standard, I mean what are what are the goals to be achieved, then teachers could use this uh, gap 
to come in with innovation because instead of telling us what to teach, they tell us what are the things that need to be taught, or what the students need to learn. So then if the focus is on these are the things that different students need to learn, then these are the different ways I can approach my teaching and learning activity so that the learning takes place. So the big shift if Malaysia or countries like Malaysia have to adapt is instead of focusing on what to teach, we focus on what the student needs to learn. And once the emphasis on what students learn, then the teachers could come in uh, and provide that additional creativity, localize and to be more sensitive to the geographical and cultural um, uniqueness to, the, to their setting. Okay, thank you very much.